All right, boys and girls, uh, I've been asked this one a number of times. Um, it's how to run BitTensor locally on your Mac. Uh, this is on an M1 or M2 Mac, not the Intel ones. Uh, for this, uh, I'm just assuming you're using a newer Mac. However, I think this should work on the Intels, and there is, um, it will also work on Windows. This covers, in fact, using something called Conda or Mini Conda, uh, which allows you to run virtual Python environments on your Mac. Because one of the biggest issues you'll find with installing BitTensor on your Mac um, or any other similar forks would be that uh, the Python command itself is reserved for Python 2 on the Mac, uh, and using aliases to override that never quite works, and you have all these package dependency issues. So everything works much better if you run a virtual environment. So, all you're going to need for this uh, is terminal. You will notice that I have a, a nice spangly looking terminal. I use something called iTerm, iTerm2, but you can do this in the regular terminal. Um, and there is a link in the bottom of the uh, uh, resources for this that shows you how to make your terminal look as nice as mine. Um, this is in the Taustats BitTensor resources um, uh, GitHub, and I'll link to it in, in the description of the video with all of the full instructions. So, the first thing you need to do is download the BitTensor YAML file. I'm going to open that one in a new tab. I think I've actually already got it on my desktop. I do indeed. Um, it's a file that has all of the requirements and dependencies for installing BitTensor locally. Uh, so we're going to just grab that. Got it here on my desktop. Actually, so I'm just going to rename it. So, easy, easy for a first step. Um, now you need to download and install Miniconda. Um, and you do that by going to the download Miniconda link, which I've got here. And if we just expand this slightly, you will see a different bunch of or different ways to uh, install Miniconda. Um, and you can literally use the um, uh, set of commands that you have here. Now, I actually, in my user folder, I've just realized uh, I already have Miniconda, uh, so I need to delete it, I believe. Uh, RMRF Miniconda 3. So much I love you guys. I am getting rid of my fully functioning virtual environment. Uh, this, incidentally, is how you uninstall Miniconda afterwards, should you wish to. It's gone. Right. Start with a nice new window now. And so, although you can download uh, Visual Installers, you can quite simply, in your home folder, make a directory called Miniconda. Grab the latest version. Now this is the ARM64 version. Uh, we actually don't want that. We want the, um, oh yes we do, we do want the, do we want the ARM64? That's a very good question. Uh, I'm not sure. So what I'm going to do, you can see the URL is here. Um, I'm just looking for the bash one here. Mac OS ARM 64, Apple M1, yes, Apple M1. So you can just see I'm looking down here at the link. The Apple M1 is Miniconda latest Mac OS ARM 64, which is the same one they're using here. If you're doing this obviously on any other system, you can just see at the bottom what the link is. You can also right click, right -click and copy the link and grab any of the other versions. But this is the correct uh, version. I should probably have turned my notifications off at this point. Uh, let's quit everything that is going to interrupt this video. Uh, that is everything that's going to interrupt this video. Gone. Uh, there you go. We have curled that. So we've grabbed the latest version. Now we are going to install it. And then once that is done, we remove the installation file. I'm going to leave this playing because uh, I think it's often useful to know how long things take to uh, install. Uh, fairly decent M1 Mac, but it's not one of the new M2s, so it's always useful. 
I can just chat to you in the meantime. Uh, the benefit of this, of course, now let's just remove the installation, is you can now manage all of your BitTensor um, wallets locally. So if you're running lots of different servers, you can do everything locally, you can check your balances locally, and most importantly, you can interact with the network without needing to use any third-party wallets or websites. You can do all of your staking, delegating, transfers from the command line. It really is the only way um, that, that, that for you to do things. Um, we will just minute mesh. And do both at the same time. Not sure which one what you are using, so just run both. Uh, close the window and open a new window. Right, so now we've done that. We can actually come back here. Uh, we have installed um, the uh, downloaded mini conda. A spelling mistake there. So now we want to make a new environment, uh, but we're going to need to do it with the correct location to that file. Um, so mine is on the desktop. Uh, I'm in my user folder already. So it's going to be desktop as a capital desktop. You can just download that file anywhere. I could have put it into my Miniconda. Um, I'm just going to create a virtual environment. It will now read that file and uh, install everything that is required. That easy. Now, once that's done, what you're next going to need to do is to activate the environment, Conda Activate BitTensor. Now, interestingly enough, this environment, I don't only use it for BitTensor, I use it for um, should we say other uh, situations that require the same setup, uh, BitTensor forks specifically, um, and uh, other Python uh, related things, so it's quite useful. But whenever you open a new session, so a new terminal window, um, or switch your computer on again, you will need to Conda Activate BitTensor. Um, so it doesn't overwrite your sort of default all the time behavior of your terminal. I should probably have put these two in a different uh, in order. It would be nice to verify the environment list first of all before we activate it. I will sort those around after the... I am going to pause this and just let it install all of the dependencies. Should have been patient, that was probably only about five seconds longer. So you can see it tells you exactly what to do, Conda activate uh, BitTensor or Conda deactivate. You can just verify the environments with the command Conda environment list and it will show you have base um, and BitTensor. So in order to activate the BitTensor environment, Conda activate BitTensor and you should now be able to just install BitTensor with absolutely no issues locally. I'm using the uh, script version of installing it I'm just thinking, I do actually have BitTensor installed on this machine, um, but this should not overwrite it, he says. Possibly about to overwrite it, that would be very annoying. Again, this is just a bit tensor installation, takes a little bit of time, so I I'm gonna let it run actually so you can see what it does. Yours should be doing the same.
Now, once this is done, of course, you can import your uh, wallets. You can create new wallets, BTCLIW new cold key, BTCLIW new hot key. These are the new revolution BTCLI commands or BTCLIW regen cold key or BTCLIW regen hot key to set up your existing cold keys and hot keys on this machine. I am going to pause it, otherwise we might be here for about five minutes. And there you go, about a minute later it's finished. I did see in there that I think it did just remove my wallets, which would be most annoying, but that's, you know, I can set that up again. BTCLI S, oh, where am I? In the wrong window. BTCLI S Metagraph. Let's just check one of the Metagraphs. which should definitely be quicker than this, but there we go. Should we check the Metagraph for subnet one? That way you can see already, here I am using BitTensor locally. Uh, so that is all you need to do to set up BitTensor locally. Um, I'm just gonna let this Metagraph load, and there you go, there's a full Metagraph. Now if I wanted to do something like btcli w transfer uh, to transfer uh, wallets, See if it does, uh, well, I'm not going to transfer anything. Um, we can also um, obviously update when it's time to update. Git fetch origin master for the main branch of a. Uh, 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 I'm not in the bit tensor directory, am I? Uh, so it's installed it in, there you go, uh, cd on the dot bit tensor bit tensor. Oh, I should have done. Ah, from the root. That will help. Uh, I'm in the home directory already, putting that slash there does it from the root, so that's where I need to be. Um, item nicely tells you what branch you're under. Uh, now I will be able to git fetch origin master. There it is. Git pull, as I've just installed the latest version, I am of course up to date, but you can do all of your updates here and you can do all of your interactions with the BitTensor network. There you go. That is how you set up BitTensor in less than 30 minutes locally on your Mac.